you get when you take eight guys, 10 blades, four weeks, and a goal of finding the world's perfect shaving technique this episode. Today we're teaching you the ideal style of shaving, and the answer will blow the hair clean off your face. Hello internet, welcome to Style Theory. Hair today, gone tomorrow. One of our goals on this channel is to ultimately break down and rebuild your personal style routines to optimize them from the ground up. So far we've tackled color theory, washing your legs, and sketchy soaps, but today we're taking a blade to our own face in the name of science. That's right, I'm talking about shaving. Now, I tend to be a clean shaven guy myself, and I'm not just talking about this eternally youthful cutout version of me. I shave pretty much every day regardless of whether I'm gonna be on camera or not. So what can I say? I appreciate that baby smooth pre pubescent look that it gives me. That said, for 99.99% .99 of my shaves, I'm using an electric razor because it's fast, it's cheap, and it's effective. But when I mentioned that fact to the rest of the office, I was shocked to learn I was in the minority. No one else used an electric razor. In fact, no one else could agree on a shaving technique in general, which got me wondering, was I doing everything all wrong? Had I put all my eggs into the wrong razor-bladed basket? Should I have been choosing something different? Something that could give me a better, cleaner, and closer shave? And when questions like that pop into my head, you know what that means? It means me roping in the entire team and filming them in the bathroom for multiple weeks as we scientifically determine what tool will actually deliver you the perfect shave for the best price. Now, what do I mean by the best shave? Well, for that, we have to look to the best source of completely honest, unbiased information, commercials. The bar and the handle removes unseen dirt and debris that gets in the way of the blades, so nothing gets between you and a quick and easy shave. Products to help a man look, feel, and be his best. The best, the best. Mach 3 from Gillette. Three blades, specially positioned to shave progressively closer. You take one stroke, it takes three. Now, those are all very intense, and surprisingly, they don't really tell us all that much about what a perfect shave really is, except that it should be as close as possible. But what exactly does it mean for us in our experiment? Well, the way I see it, the criteria for a good shave really breaks down into three main categories. First and most obviously is the razor removing the hair as close to the skin as possible, leaving behind a smooth, hairless face without any sort of nick or irritation. Second, time. How long is it taking you to achieve that shave? And thirdly, what's the cost of that shave? A 10-bladed razor might give you the best, closest shave of your life, but if it costs you $100 per shave to do it, is it really that worth it? Oh, also extra bonus points if I feel like I just wrestled a bear after shaving. Based on what all of the commercials are telling me, I should probably be feeling my testosterone surging through my body after I finish taking that sharp metal piece and rubbing it against my face to remove teeny tiny hairs. Seriously, I cannot stress how very important it is to these brands that you know that they they are very manly. You're about to get shot! Oh, no! ah! So, to get the widest and most inclusive set of data we could, we pulled in members of Team Theorist from all across the country. Over on the East Coast, repping hashtag TeamNC, we have ourselves the office regulars, Justin, Josiah, Sam, and myself. And over on the other side of the country, we have hashtag TeamLA, made up of Dan, Yossi, AJ, and Melvin. Of this group, three of us, Melvin, AJ, and myself, were the ones that normally keep a clean, shaven face. Everyone else tended to prefer keeping some form of facial hair on a regular basis. And when I say preferred, I mean really preferred. I was shocked at some of the strong emotional attachments some of these people had to their chin hair. I really like my beard, man. Yossi, you, you, you do know that you didn't have to do this, right, bud? I volunteered for this. I just wanted my face on theorists every once in a while. I don't have it up a lot. Oh, well, um, okay then. I, I feel significantly less bad about this. Yes, hi, hello, it is me, head editor Dan, and I'm, I'm gonna shave my face, and I really, I really don't want to do it. The timing of this is terrible, because I just got, like, a beard growing like kit because I got this one patchy spot and I kind of like it to be, you know, not patchy. Instead, I'm gonna shave my face. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, Matt and Amy. You guys are just the best. You know, watching back some of this footage, I don't think people really understood the concept of volunteering. Anyway, across our brave list of reluctant volunteers, we had people who hadn't shaved in years. I had to look on my phone to see the last time I shaved and it was uh, August of 2018. As well as people who shave almost daily. I shave every single day just to make sure it's as smooth as possible. We have people who can't grow themselves a ton of facial hair. My facial hair doesn't grow enough for me to grow a legit beard. As well as people with thick, coarse hair. My hair type is 4C. Thick hair, lots of it extremely curly. So in general, we just tried to cast as broad of a net as possible with this one. The test had us circulating through four different types of razors over the course of about two weeks. A wet, dry electric, a single-bladed safety razor, a disposable option, and a deluxe five-bladed cartridge razor. The Gillette Fusion 5. I have always been curious about this thing. Five blades? That seems like so much overkill, it's crazy. Obviously, of that list, there is one missing, the straight razor. We actually chose to eliminate it from the test mostly for safety reasons. Because 
because they're more old-fashioned and not as widely used in modern routines, we figured our collective inexperience with it would hamper our overall results. And let me tell you, even experienced hair professionals struggle with these things. True story, one of my favorite musicals of all time is Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, all about this murdering barber shaving his way through London on a quest for revenge. And because I'm a theater nerd, I went to Fleet Street in London to get a shave from the Demon Barber himself. There is actually a shop there called the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. The guy down there had himself a parrot flying around. It was just a very surreal experience. Anyway, I asked him for a straight razor shave, you know, from the barber shop named after the notorious killer who did that exact treatment, and the guy was obviously super nervous. I must have been the only customer to ask for that in, like, forever. Anyway, long story short, the shave was like he was hacking away at thick grass with a dull switchblade. Longest, most uncomfortable shave I've ever had in my life. So, if a pro can't be trusted to do it right, I can't possibly ask our team to do it right either. Overall, the team was mixed on what they tend to use by default. I'm electric, Josiah, Justin, and Sam used the safety razor, and Melvin was the most versatile, proficient in all the types. I suppose you could say that he's a jack of all blades. For our hairier participants, we trimmed down the beard to a shavable length before the first day of experimentation. From there, to try and keep the hair length as even as possible, we shaved every four days to allow for regrowth between the shaves. But we didn't just want to shave, we also wanted to test out the effectiveness of shaving cream. To do that, each test day saw us dividing our face into two sections. One, the no product side, was only wetting our faces with water or keeping it entirely dry in the case of electric razors. The other side then was allowed to use product. And to keep it consistent, we all used the same brand of sensitive skin shaving shaving cream. In general, shaving cream is meant to perform two jobs. First, it's supposed to hydrate and soften your facial hair, making it easier and less abrasive to shave. And secondly, it's meant to act as a lubricant for your face to help the blade glide through. But is it truly helping to deliver a better shave, or are you just washing your money down the drain? We were determined to find out once and for all. In the end, we were looking for closeness of shave, skin irritation, easy use, and overall cost. So, day one, I was already excited because we were on my home turf, the electric razor. So, 99 point 99% of my life has been spent using electric razors. I've gone through like the three wheeled guys, I've gone through some of the more flexible heads, I've gone through kind of like the straight guys that go up and down. Electric razor through and through, my friends. Born and raised. Proud. And my praises of the almighty electric just continued from there. And one of the reasons I love an electric razor is that it's super efficient. It's fast. You just like rub your face around on it and it's done. Like I don't even have to look in a mirror to do it. Based on hearing the sound of hairs being trimmed, I get a sense of like, oh, that section's done. So easy, right? Little did I suspect how much trouble the rest of the team would have when taken out of their comfort zones. Oh. This... I'm not sure if I'm using this right. It's... What the heck is going on here? This is like... Okay. Am, am I... I, I'm definitely using this wrong. Am I supposed to like be rubbing it on my face? Clearly, this man was in need of some help. Dad Pat, engage! I stepped in to give Josiah the crash course in electric razors like the kind, thoughtful boss that I am. What's going on? Is this complicated? This is the most complicated razor I've ever seen in my life. Are you kidding me? What's the problem? The, uh, these three blades? Yeah. It's This is like a computer, like, <laughs> on your face! It's a computer! It is the simplest thing to make out. You just... Take it, you like literally just take it and run around. You, do you yeah. rub it? You go in circles, but basically your goal, right, is to get the hairs. This right here, this is the man that I choose to trust with my analytics. Honestly, I was surprised by how hard of a time Josiah was having. And it turns out he wasn't alone. It's not necessarily like hurting me now anymore, but like it's definitely pulling my hair. It's definitely irritating my skin. It just doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good either. It still feels like there's a ton of hair there. You can see there's still a ton of hair there. At the end of the day, the team was pretty divided on the electric razor. Many said it pulled their hair and was painful. Painful, at least at the start until they found their groove. We also wound up divided on the shaving cream. Half preferred with shaving cream, and the other half preferred dry. Down under your neck and chin area, it's always the trickiest spot to get. And here it feels harder because of the wetness causing the hair to kind of stick to my face. It just feels messy here now. The dry feels smoother. Sam, though, he was not convinced. I, I feel validated now in my disdain for automatic razors, because if this is the kind of experience that's out there waiting for me, I'm not interested. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass. But thank you very much. So, at the end of testing day one, I was unable to convert anyone to Team Electric, but I think everyone walked away pleasantly surprised by how smooth their faces were able to get with the fresh blades and the electric razor. Testing day two brought us to the one-bladed safety razor, which meant that the tables had turned on me. I'm actually really nervous about this episode because it's gonna show off 
how little I know about how to actually shave my face using a normal razor. Like, I'm glad that everyone else on the team is providing extra data points for this because me doing it just naturally is, is gonna give you a false estimate. Luckily, Josiah was there to coach me through, just like I had done for him a few days prior. It was time for the student to become the master. This is a straight razor. <laughs> No. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Thanks a lot for the pro tips. So the difference between this and some of the other razors we'll be using is you got to be a little bit more careful with it. Oh, oh really? More careful with a safety razor. And here people complain about YouTubers using clickbait. Oh, great. I'm glad that we went from the easiest one, which is literally like just smash your face with it to, oh, this is the one that will slit my throat. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it I mean, just, just be careful. And now, as I'm showing you this. But not only was I risking the threat of death with this one, I also quickly learned that there was some assembly required. And so as I'm taking this apart. Oh geez, we're like doing construction work here. It is. There's like screws and stuff. <laughs> There's like screws and stuff involved with this thing? Oh my gosh. And so this does feel like a much more masculine razor. I will say like, I look at this thing and I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is literally a tool in a tool. Oh my God, this thing is like as heavy as like a ratchet. <laughs> You know, like a wrench or something. As a matter of fact, I keep it right by my hammer. <laughs> Wait, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Truly the testosterone score on this one through the roof. After getting the cliff notes on how not to cut off huge chunks of my flesh, I then learned that there were even more caveats to this thing. You're, I know you're gonna love this, right? This uh -huh. this just adds, adds to this razor. You can't use this for like, you know, a few weeks straight or, or a month straight or whatever. Like you can maybe, you can get there with the disposal razor. This you're changing like every week. Every week you're buying yourself a new blade? And there's some guys I know who change out the blade every day. What? And how much does it cost? They're, they're dirt cheap. Okay, that, that, that's good at least. Clearly I was talking to a man who had been fully brainwashed by this razor. And the other nice thing about them is this. Now I just feel like a salesman for, for these. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not spawn. They come wrapped so nicely. I like that a lot of the the sales of this though are like the accoutrement around it. Like, ooh, it's a heavy blade and ooh, it comes individually wrapped. But is it different? Good question, me. It was time to find out. Be careful. I nicked myself a few times whenever I first started. <laughs> I am literally going to die today. Honestly, I can't really say that I saw the appeal. You know what it's like to peel an orange? That's what I'm doing to the skin of my face right now. Yeah, I chalk a lot of it up to my inexperience with the blade, but overall I found the shave to yield a similar closeness while taking more time and more effort than my normal electric razor. In general, it was just less user-friendly as I struggled to find the right angle for the blade on the various parts of my face. Additionally, my skin felt irritated and inflamed on both the product and no product side. And I wasn't the only one. Josiah, unsurprisingly, had a much smoother time with his shave, but the micro cuts that he was getting from the blade actually caused him to have an allergic reaction to the sense sensitive skin shaving cream. Is it just me or are you seeing the track lines on his face? Oh, I'm seeing them. Right? I'm shocked. Is that That's just my allergies. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Because I'm noticing the like red marks where you were stroking. That's not you cutting your face. That's like no. an allergic reaction to the- A little bit of allergic reaction to the product. Yeah. That's right. Josiah got such a close shave with his safety razor compared to the electric from day one that his skin was reacting to the shaving cream in a brand new and not so great way. Speaking of pain, I think it's a good time to mention technique. The most recommended method when shaving is to shave with the grain of your hair. What this does is decrease your likelihood of irritation because you're not pulling or ripping at the hair. If you do need to change angles, experts recommend shaving across the grain as your cleanup method. And whatever you do, avoid going against the grain whenever you can. Unless, of course, you're stubborn and your name is Sam. So I like to do both with and against the grain because I think it gives you a much better, much smoother face. But I, I usually will start with the grain unless I'm doing my neck because then it's just all bets are off. Sam, always the rebel of Team Theorist. That said, all the testers seem to be faring pretty darn well. It's getting everything. Mm -hmm. In the first pass, like I can already tell that they got all of my facial hair on the wow, side. Wow, look at that smooth boy. Is it better than the electric razor? Uh, absolutely better than the electric razor. I've, I got a lot more accuracy, accuracy out of this, and while I don't think it's like baby smooth, I still think it is pretty close to what I needed to, like if I were shaving my face, this is what I'd go. I want my facial hair back so bad. I will say this just feels smoother to me. Like it feels like there's less 
friction on my skin. Overall, the team felt that the safety razor with product gave them the smoother, less irritated shave. And when you look at the comparisons, you can see that for all my whining and moaning, it did do a pretty good job across the board. You know, it just took me a solid 20 minutes to get through it all, because I was nervous. And with that, we've made it halfway through, friends. I think we've proven how far we're willing to go in the name of science. All these fine gentlemen sacrificing their faces to get you the answers to what gets you the perfect shave, I think that sacrifice deserves a slice of the old subscribe button. I mean, what other channel is gonna go to these lengths to bring you the answers to questions like, do killer nails actually exist? Or can feng shui cure my depression? The answer is no one else is gonna do that for you. And if you don't wanna miss the answer to either of those two questions I just mentioned, or any of our other future episodes, then make sure you hit the subscribe button to become part of the Style Theorist family. And with that, it was on to the worst part of our experiment, testing day three. Everyone hated this day, bar none, no comparison. From the beginning, we could feel the difference between this razor and the ones that we'd used the previous two days. The feel wasn't as nice, the head didn't move or glide across the skin. It was bad. It feel, it feels cheap. As I'm sure we all know, it is cheap. And there is something about it that doesn't feel like it did what I wanted it to do. Overall, we all struggled with the disposables. And it was also on this day that I finally drew first blood. Ooh, that's my skin. Oh, that's just my skin dangling there. Oh, don't worry, that's just my skin hanging off of my face. About time. I think it's a miracle that I've been able to last this long without slicing my face. You wanna know how I got these scars? Shaving with a disposable razor, actually. Sure, we got ourselves an okay close shave, but at what cost? Would I have gotten just as close of a shave without slicing my face off with an electric razor? Yes. Yes, I would have. So... Who's the real winner here today? Well, the razor worked, we all wound up with irritated skin. In fact, the experience of the whole thing was so bad, it left AJ speechless. Um. Yeah. What may have made this process so hard for AJ is that he, like many other people out there, has extremely sensitive skin, and the disposables were not kind to it. My experience afterwards is more than what most would say. I actually get something called pseudophilic colitis barbe. For all us laymans, that means that he has an extreme version of razor burn. It's when your skin gets inflamed after shaving and starts to form a bunch of tiny red dots, sometimes called razor bumps. Depending on your skin sensitivity, this can range from irritating to extremely painful. And while the other razors hadn't given him trouble, this one left him feeling like he'd just gone 10 rounds with a butcher's knife. The only question that we were left with was whether the extra skin irritation was worth the presumably lower price point of the disposable razors. I'll run those cost calculations near the end of the episode. For now, let's just take the L on day three and move on to our final testing day. And I gotta say, after the disastrous day three, day four was a relief. It was time for the big boy, the Mega Blade, the Fusion 5. I remember seeing these things on TV as a kid and thinking that they were like the coolest thing ever. I mean, just look at the commercial. Introducing the miracle of fusion, a revolutionary technology and a unique idea come together to create New Gillette Fusion. They fused ideas and technology and got a razor. It was so cool. It's like shaving my face with lasers. So this was really a full circle moment for my inner 10 year old who dreamed of the day that he had enough money and facial hair to warrant using this five bladed masterpiece. All right, let's see five, the power of five blades feels Fine. Ah, the feeling of childhood dreams shriveling up and dying. I I'm kidding, actually. I was really surprised by how much I liked the five blades and how much of a difference they made. Going into today, I thought that this one would be fine. I thought it would be maybe slightly better than the other razors, but not so vastly superior to everything else that we've been using throughout this test. The game changer to me is the pivoting head. This and being able to follow the curve of your face allows you to take longer strokes and feel more secure about how it's running on your face. The other thing I didn't realize that I'd appreciate is how much the five blades actually create a flat surface to fit on your face which allows you to create a more natural stroke. So it seemed like the marketing hype was real for me. The five blades weren't just selling me a bunch of excess bunk, it was actually delivering a more distributed, even, and safer cut to my face. But while I was certainly pleasantly surprised, what would everyone else say? Pretty much smoothness, the shave itself is, seems pretty much the same. Wow, that was, that was kind of simple and easy, I'm not going to lie. Out of everything that I've done so far, this has been, I think, the most familiar, so instantly the most comfortable shave that I've done so far. The best part about this, this particular day is that it's over. 
and then I can get my facial hair back and then look like me? I guess that's one way to look at the bright side of things, Dan. Looking at the final lineup, everyone agreed that this provided a really smooth, safe, and quick shave. Everyone also agreed that the product side yielded a smoother, cleaner, faster shave. So after days of subjecting our skin to razor burn, undiagnosed skin allergies, and Dan's clean-shaven face, we had our data. Now all we needed to do was factor in the cost. I mean, after all, remember what Josiah said earlier. This you're changing like every week. Every week you're buying yourself a new blade? And, and there's some guys I know who change out the blade every day. What? And how much does it cost? They're, they're dirt cheap. So that then begs the question, just how cheap are we talking about here? And honestly, when it comes to shaving, the cost question is a big one. When you ask people, a huge mark against electric razors tend to be the price. Meanwhile, everyone universally agreed that the disposable razors were hot garbage, but maybe their cheapness was worth the occasional blood sacrifice. So we decided to run the numbers and found ourselves a pretty uncomfortable truth. Let's start with how many shaves we're talking about. According to surveys, the average person shaves their face every other day starting around puberty. So that's about 182 times a year for about 65 years. In total, that's about 12,000 shaves in your lifetime. So let's just start off with the expensive boy, electric razors. These puppies will run you anywhere between $50 to $300 to get started. Admittedly, it's a hefty price of entry, but you're not replacing the blade as often. It's generally recommended that you replace the foil and blades once a year, costing about $25 to $50 a pop. And the actual razor itself gets replaced every seven years. In short, that means that we're looking at about $2,275 in blades and anywhere between $500 and $3,000 to replace the full machine over the course of your lifetime. Woof! It's a pretty hefty price tag in a very broad range. A safety razor, on the other hand, recommends replacing the blade about once a week, which is about 3,300 blades over the course of your lifetime. Now, the initial cost is a lot lower, with blade replacements clocking in as low as $10 for a pack of 100 or about $338 total for a lifetime of blades. Safety razors themselves cost about $35 for the handle, and you'll likely need to replace them a couple times throughout those 65 years. So we're going to put the full estimate for single blade safety at about $700 for your lifetime. Disposable razors, meanwhile, the biggest lie you've ever been sold. In general, their prices average out to be about a buck per razor. And reading online instructions, they can last between 3 and 10 shaves. So let's just pick 5 as a nice middle number there. In total, that puts you at $2,400 for a lifetime of disposable shaves, shockingly close to the electric razor cost. So despite being considered the okay because it's cheap route, it's actually not saving you any sort of money. All it is is costing you more cash as you use toilet paper rolls to blot more and more of the blood on your face. Lastly, that brings us to the Mega Blade, the Fusion 5 Gillette. This one's getting you about 20 shaves per cartridge, according to the website. And boy, are these refills pricey. A pack of 12 is going to cost you the absolute painful $48.99. That means that you're paying around $2,400 in just replacement cartridges, giving us a total of about $2,540 when you factor in replacing the handles as well. So let's just see those ranked from most expensive to least expensive and top. The Safety Razor wins this one by a massive margin. It is half the cost of the second place razor. The rest, though, fall into a surprisingly similar territory. If you eliminate the super high-end electric razor, every single other option is running you basically the exact same price, $2,500. Also, all of that's without even talking about the shaving cream. If you start adding shaving cream into the equation, that's going to push most of them up into that dry electric razor range. Just saying, the numbers are even closer than what we calculated right here. So with all the data in, what have we learned today? Well, disposable razors are trash. Pure hot garbage. Absolutely not worth your time. They were the worst user experience by far and left us all with the most injuries of any blade. And ultimately, they're not even saving you money. Just do not use them. They're a waste. Secondly, product. Don't use shaving cream for electric, but all the other razors definitely benefited from the extra assistance. Just make sure that you have a skin test before dousing your face in something that you might have an allergic reaction to. And finally, the most shocking results of them all, the razors. Safety razor definitely wound up as our front runner. It was cheap, it was effective, and it was the most manly. But overall, any of the blades were able to give us very similar shaves once we got the hang of them. Just take a look at all of our shaved faces side by side. They all look insanely similar. They also felt insanely similar. In fact, if I were to shuffle them all up right now, you'd have no idea because 
because they were all identical. Based on the results across all eight testers, we can actually conclude that it's not the device that matters for giving you a close shave, it actually comes down to two key factors, skill and the newness of the blade. The more familiar the testers were with the razor, the better their shave wound up being. It's all about mastering the learning curve. From there, the big deciding factor was the sharpness of the blade. Since everything in our tests were brand new, they were all super sharp, which gave us all, regardless of device, a pretty consistent baby smooth shave in pretty much every category. So that's the answer then, right? Safety razor wins by the razor's edge of a margin. Well, this all brings up a point that, at least up until now, we've been assuming to be true. Are people actually looking to have a close skin scraping shave, or is that just what we think we want because of all the advertising that's been shoved in our faces since childhood? Three blades, specially positioned to shave progressively closer. You take one stroke, it takes three. Because let me tell you, over the course of the past few weeks, I discovered something really interesting. Each and every one of us hated how we looked, even me, who shaves every day. See, I'm a little lazy when it comes to replacing the blades in my electric razor. I've had the same blades for, uh, huh, well, let's just say way longer than the recommended replacement period, which means that my blades aren't as sharp as the brand new blades that we were using for this test. And so when I used the new razor, even Steph and Ollie said that I looked younger and more baby-faced. And you know what? I hated it. They hated it. Apparently, we've all grown accustomed to my little five o'clock shadow left behind by my dull blades. And it wasn't just me either. Out of all our participants, none of them preferred the super close shave that we got from the brand new blades. All of us agreed that we liked our faces with a little bit of leftover stubble. I do like having facial hair. I like it to be just a little bit. People like to call it the five o'clock shadow. So just a little bit to say that I have facial hair growing. It's basically the masculine version of contouring. I use an electric razor with not a new head. It's kind of used, it's worn, so it leaves a little bit of stubble. And looking across the board at everyone who's participated in this experiment, at least here in North Carolina, everyone's like, oh, this is not my normal thing, right? I like a day or two of stubble. I like having a little bit of a five o'clock shadow. The baby face does not work for pretty much anyone who's involved with this, including myself, who thought I like the baby face. This goes against everything that I've thought and been told about shaving. I always thought that the closer the shave, the better the results. After all, that's what the ads tell me. That's what society tells me. Heck, that is what I've been telling myself. But we were all wrong. The real question here isn't what gives you the perfect shave, but rather what is the perfect shave? For many, facial hair is the marker that signals that you've become a man. It is your ticket into adulthood. Throughout this experience, all of us talked about how masculine this experiment was making us feel. Very sleek design, very masculine. I feel like like, I've gotten one step closer to earning my man card today. When we were casting this episode, a lot of the team turned us down because they couldn't see themselves without the facial hair. It meant too much to them and their identity. Facial hair turned out to be the safety blanket of being a grown-up, even if it was a very, very small amount like I had on my face. It makes a huge difference to how we see ourselves and how the people close to us see us. Now, there are plenty of people out there in the world, so obviously personal preference for facial hair is gonna vary. But I think we can safely say at this point that for most people, what they're actually looking for is that action movie 5 o'clock shadow, or maybe more like a 2.30 p.m. shadow for being real honest. In the end, the perfect shave is actually not a close shave at all. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp, but not too sharp. And hey, if you like this episode, you are gonna love the start of our hygiene journey where we found out whether or not you need to wash your legs. And that one's the box on the left. Or if you're looking for something completely different, how about you watch me roast myself like a Christmas ham to find out if sunscreen actually protects you. That one's the box on the right. As always, my friends, I'll see you next week.